ladies and gentlemen, for the announcement of 17.3, the director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. 17.3 is... not going to include the dumbbell. 17.3 is going to include a barbell. 17.3 is a squat snatch ladder. 17.3 95 for the men, 65 for the women. 135 for the men, 95 for the women. 185 for the men, 135 for the women. 225 for the men, 155 for the women. 245 for the men, 175 for the women. And 265 for the men, 185 for the women. The reps are the following. 18, 15, 12, 9, 6, 3. Of course, we're not going to do this alone. We are going to pair the squat snatch with a second movement. The second movement is chest to bar pull up. The reps for the chest to bar pull up are 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, and 33. Now we're going to take the pull-ups, the snatch, and these reps, and we're going to combine them into this special test. Three rounds of six chest of bar pull-ups and six squat snatch. Then three rounds of seven chest of bar pull-ups five squat snatch, three rounds of eight, four, three rounds of nine chest to bar pull-ups, three squat snatch, three rounds of ten, two, and three rounds of eleven, and one. 17.3 is three rounds of six chest to bar pull up, six squat snatch, 95, 65, then three rounds of seven chest to bar pull up, five squat snatch, 135, and 95. You have eight minutes to complete that work. If you complete that work in eight minutes, you are given an additional four minutes of work time to complete the next round of three rounds of eight chest to bar pull-ups, four squat snatch. If you complete that, all of this work in under 12 minutes, you are given an additional four minutes to complete three rounds of nine chest to bar pull-ups, three squat snatch, 225, 155. If you complete all of that in 16 minutes, 
you are given an additional four minutes to complete three rounds of 10 chest to bar pull up, two squat snatch. If you complete all of that in 20 minutes, you are given an additional four minutes to do three <laughs> rounds uh, of 11 chest to bar pull ups, one squat snatch, 265, 185. That, my friends, is 17.3. They say everything's bigger in Texas, and thank God we get to see some barbells with big weights, but you still have to earn the right to get there. I know we say it all the time, guys. These look like run-of-the-mill CrossFit movements, but please pay attention. 417.3 to count. It needs to look like this. At the call of three, two, one, go. The athlete has eight minutes to perform three rounds of six chest to bar pull ups and six squat snatches at 95 pounds for men and 65 pounds for women. Then, three more rounds of seven chest to bar pull ups and five squat snatches, 135 pounds for men and 95 pounds for women. If all six rounds are not completed before the eight minute cap, the athlete is done and will record the total reps they completed. If all six rounds are completed prior to the eight minute mark, the time cap will be extended by four minutes and the reps and load will change the next three rounds. If the athlete continues to complete all the required work within the extending time caps, their workout will continue for up to 24 minutes. This workout is over when the athlete completes all the required work prior to 24 minutes or fails to complete all of the repetitions within the cutoff time for a section. The athlete's score is their time if they complete the workout or the number of repetitions completed up to their cutoff time. The athlete's time should be recorded at the end of every third round as this will be used as a tiebreaker. All right, we say this all the time, but it bears repeating. These are abbreviated standards, and you guys, if you're going to do the workout, please go to games.crossfit.com and check all of the standards because there are a couple of tricky ones. If you hear nothing else out of my voice tonight, hear these three things. One, there are no free rides. You cannot catch a power snatch and overhead squat it. The second, you can get some help from your friends. So have preloaded bars or have friends assist you with the weight changes if you plan to make it to the consecutive rounds. Now, lastly... Don't stop, guys. If you make it past the eight minutes, before eight minutes turns over, you don't have to wait. It's just money in the bank that you get to use later on. So continue on. Hey, one special reminder also. This week, don't mess around with leaderboarding. Just submit your score early so you don't have to mess with anything. Keep it simple. All right, right now I am joined by a gentleman from the San Antonio Fire Department. He's an engineer and also one of the fitness instructors at the Fire Academy, Justin Davis. Justin, tell me about the relationship. With, yeah, thank you. Look at that. Can you tell me about the relationship with CrossFit and the Fire Academy? Well, our entire uh, academy program is based on CrossFit. So when the cadets start the program, they start with mostly body weight type movements. And as they progress, we start using different firefighter implements like fire hose and air bottles. And wh why CrossFit? Well, CrossFit is functional. It takes, uh, you got to know, be ready for anything. So just like tonight, these athletes didn't know what they were going to be hit with. Firefighters, every time they go to work, they don't know what they're going to face. Uh, so we try to prepare our cadets to be ready for anything out there. Right, Justin, thank you for being here. Let's give it up one more time for the entire San Antonio Fire Department, guys. All right, it's almost time to go up to the booth for the action. But one reminder for you folks at home, there will be a second screen experience. I know you guys got one, so pull it out. If you're watching the Director's Cut here on the CrossFit Games Facebook page, stay here. But pull out another device, and we're going to give you the champ cam. So you can see the fittest man on earth take on 17.3 coast to coast for his entire workout while you're watching the cut version as well. All right, it's almost time, guys. We're going to send it up to the booth where Chase Ingram is hanging out with Bill Grundler and Stacey Tovar's in the house. Remember the Alamo, go Spurs go, and welcome to San Antonio. It's good to be home, my hometown. I'm Chase Singham. Alongside with me is Bill Grunler and Stacey Tovar. And Stacey, let me just come to you. You've done an open announcement before. What's it like to hear the workout and then say, you have 10 minutes to get ready to go? Oh, 
Well, you're going through a whole a bunch of emotions. The first thing is, did I just hear Dave Castro right? Oh my gosh, you're <laughs> kind of looking around like, holy cow, he did say that. The second thing I think they're they're more concerned about is all three of these guys love that heavy barbell. So they're like, Whew, okay, no dumbbells. That's awesome. So, um, and then the third thing is, okay, look at this rep scheme. The, he said 24 minutes. Okay, the goal is to go 24 minutes. So. Bill, dumbbells are out, yeah. barbells are in in a big way. It, 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 in a huge way, in the first face that I saw was Matt Fraser, and he was like, and I need to, I have to take the expletives out, but it was like, <laughs> oh yeah, and he didn't say oh yeah, but it was, oh yeah, finally we're going to do snatching and it's going to be heavy, and that's exactly what these guys want. We have three big heavy hitters here. 275 and plus is what all these guys can hit as a one rep max, so the 265, they should all get there, and I, you know what? Putting this event into something similar to what last year's regional event was uh, in that snatch ladder, Matt had an unbelievable time. Scott basically was very close to him, so I think we're going to have a race between those two guys all the way through this event. I agree. We have three guys set and ready to take on 17.3, and as Dave Castro just been a long time describing is that we have a lot of work cut out for these athletes, and different than traditional go times bill and stacy's they're actually getting a lot more time to warm up for this event well you know it's a technical movement so it's important to get your body primed especially for the heavier ones use a lightweight early uh proper movement proper movement that'll set you up for you start getting a little bit more fatigue and what'll be kind of interesting is to see what these guys are lifting right there you see matt throwing around 95 pounds obviously not an issue with him since he has a 315 pound one rep max 95 is nothing but you want to kind of prime the engine, kind of get rid of some of those jitters, get rid of that adrenaline a little bit. A couple of those, get up on the uh, on the pull-up bar, just kind of loosen up those shoulders, loosen up those lats, and uh, see where you can go from there. I'm going to be kind of interested to see how heavy these guys go in the warm-up, though. Stacey, what would, what kind of strategy would you take in your warm-up getting set for something like this type of workout? I kind of think that I agree with what Bill was saying. You know, don't go heavier than the 95. Use that first three rounds um, to get yourself a little bit warmed up. Um, I have noticed I would have gotten my grips out right away because um, this is going to be very <laughs> grip friendly by the time it's all said and done. But uh, And then the third thing I think about is just getting that time in the bank. You know, the goal is to finish this workout in the 24 minutes. So the more time you can bank, the better off you are. And when you did your open announcement, it was something similar. It was ascending weighted deadlifts, if I remember correctly, back in New Orleans. And and so you, you think keeping a lightweight in warm up and not testing to see how if they can make those jumps. Yeah, you're already pretty jazzed. You're, you're you know, you're ready to go at this point. And so uh, the heavy loads are going to come even if you don't have the strength, just because your adrenaline's rolling and all right. that stuff. So save your central nervous system. Don't tax yourself. Catch your breath. Um, get the little jitters out with that light load. And, and I really think that these guys are going to use those first three rounds. I mean, these guys all did the regionals, and that started at 185. So they're going to use the 95, the 135, and the 185 as their warm-up to prime themselves, get themselves ready, up into those heavier weights up at the end. Well, and you talk, you're like jazzed, excited, yeah. jitters. You know, you've been in this position. It's going to be really hard not to go out fast, you think, because it's, it's chest bar pull-up, small rep scheme when you're talking about sixes for three rounds, six reps at 95 pounds on a squash set, 65 for the women. How do you rein that in when you're out there on the floor? Yeah, that's a lot of reps to think about. And I think early on, you're going to see all three of these guys kind of play off of each other. You know, no one's going to go out super aggressive. They're all going to kind of ease into it, figure out what everyone else is going with and their game plan and go from there. I'm waiting to see the uh, cat and mouse game between Scott and Matt. Matt's always so obvious. He's very aware of where everyone is. He's always watching where everyone is and, you know, looking at the timing, he may hit a couple reps and then look over to see what Scott's doing. He usually does to sit down and wait and see what happens. Uh, so I think it's going to be a big race between those two. You know, with Cole Sager, he's kind of sitting on the, I don't want to say the outside in this particular event. This is not his event to win, really. I mean, if he if he does his comeback thing, maybe it will be. Maybe he's going to put on a show for everyone. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how he can hang with these other two guys, which they are. They're very, very, very consistent and efficient with that snatch. They're just strong. All right, well, we're inside a minute, and now here's why you guys are the analyst on the show. Stacey, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to need your one, two, three. Oh. 
Um, I think knowing Scott, having been on the Team Series crew with him for the past three years, as champions, I will add, um, I know he's going to play off of Matt, but he's not going to go out very hard. And I agree, it's going to go Matt, Scott, probably Cole. 100%. I got to agree 100%. Matt, Scott, uh, and then Cole. Well, we can predict all we want, but we have three athletes on the floor getting ready to tackle 17.3 here in San Antonio, Texas. And it's turn it off. The director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. Ten seconds, athletes, ten seconds. Three, two, one, go! 17.3 is open and ready for fitness in the Lone Star State. We have three stud CrossFit Games athletes, Cole Sager, Scott Panchek, and your champ, Matt Fraser, making very quick work right out the gates, Bill. Yeah, but look what Matt did. He was the last one to the bar. So he's taking it a little bit easier. Now, I was assuming that I'd see it a little bit more singles by Matt. And that's not even necessarily good form. Look how much he's bending over it. But again, I think he's using this as his warm-up in the event. I mean, we talked about coming out hot. Yeah. You're going to start with three rounds, six chest-to-bar pull-ups, six squat snatches, 95 pounds for these guys, which, you know, I'm pretty sure I saw a couple of them clap in the air yep. in between each one. It, this is a hyped crowd, one of the loudest ones we have ever seen for an open announcement. They got to reel it in in the very beginning. You know, and I could just hear in the crowd when everyone's talking about what this event was and when Dave was laying it out for everyone, it seemed really, really difficult to understand, but it really isn't. You just have to look at it in sets of three rounds. So you start off six chest of bar pull-ups and six squats, and that's just that one weight, the 95 pounds for these guys. Um, jumping right into that second set, the three rounds, seven chest of bar pull-ups and five squat snatches, and the weight goes up to 135. You got to do that under eight minutes. This is not going to be a problem for these guys, uh, but we may see that being an issue for some of the people back home when they're doing this event. Athletes have eight minutes to clear the first two sets of our chest to bar squat snatch couplet. Matt Fraser in the center part, red shirt. Your champ going for touch and go. Four reps at a time and two. You know, Chase, it, it, when we heard what this event was, the first thing I thought about was, okay, what's your early pacing going to be? Because these first two sets, that set of 95 and the set of 135, is going to set you up for either success or failure as you get into those heavier weights. I think all these guys were assuming 95 pounds is no big deal, so they came out a little hotter than they were wanting to. Um, if you can really relax and, and set that early pace, and that's going to save you dividends in the end. The other thing we have to look at is, are you going to miss any reps? And that, that doesn't necessarily mean a miss rep where you drop it when it gets heavier but even a no rep so they have to be consistent enough to really get each rep slow down just a touch make them all count because you have to figure if you miss one rep you're looking at anywhere from 10 seconds to 30 seconds wasted out of that four minutes that you're having to bank with and then that mental focus this is going to be for the guys that have a heavy duty snatch a long event we're looking at upwards well they're giving you a 24 minute clock but we're probably going to see somewhere between an 18 and 20 minute clock that's a long time to have breaks in between where you're constantly mentally resetting. Um, all these guys are very experienced athletes, but if someone starts to miss or get tired or wondering why they're getting tired, we, if we see anything on their face, that may be that mental break that we're talking about where one of these guys will have a chance to attack. We're seeing the athletes work through their second set. They'll be doing five squat snatches at 135. Cole Sager has a little bit of a faster cycle time in the early portion of this event. Bill, like you said, not one of the guys with the heaviest lift of the two with Scott Panchek at 310, Matt Fraser at 315. So might be buying himself a little time, giving a little bit more room on those heavier loads. Well, as long as he has the capacity to hold that. I mean, he's staying rep for rep basically with these guys, so he's really, really close, but is he going to be able to have that power left you know, under the fatigue. These other guys have a heavier lift, even when they're fatigued. So he's already under gun. So he needs to know that it's okay to kind of kick back just a touch. And Sager seems to be making up his time a lot on the pull-up rig, where Matt Fraser and Scott Panchek are a bit more conservative. We are in the second set, so it's seven chest-to-bar pull-ups. 
and five squat snatches at 135. And as we are approaching, the magic number is 72. And Bill, they had eight minutes to get there, and they only needed four. As they move from round two to the round of three, we are upping the reps on the chest of our pull-ups. Eight total each round, dropping your squat snatches to four. 185 is the weight, and we haven't seen much breaking on the chest bars yet, and I'm fair, I know these guys are world right. class. You're right. talking about first, fifth, and sixth in the world at last year's games. And that right there was something we were talking about. We're talking, if you miss a rep or you get overexcited, that's going to cost you. That right there just cost him 15 seconds. And Chase, I think it might have something to do with what you're talking about, the pull-ups. The pull-ups are not big numbers for these guys to do, but they sneak up on you, so you're constantly pulling, constantly pulling, constantly pulling, and then all of a sudden you need to get to the heavier barbell and you need to be able to react to that. And maybe another factor that they really didn't think about is you're going, 185 is not a heavy weight. No. But going from 135 to 185 right. is a bit more challenging than you would think. A 50-pound jump is a big jump. Even if it's a light weight, that's a very large jump. And I wouldn't be surprised if these guys went and we saw Scott just hop down right there. That's a good break for him. These guys can break this in half and not lose a lot of time. Going unbroken like Matt's doing right there in the center, there really isn't the need to do that right now. It just isn't the, it's not going to serve the purpose that you want it to. Fraser off the rig first, done with their first round, moving into the second round of the third set. Four squat snatches at 185. Matt Fraser, Scott Pancheck has made up ground as well as Cole Sager on the far right side of your screen is now starting to break up his chest bar pull-ups. You no, know, and Scott Pancheck did break up his chest bar pull-ups, and Matt Fraser went unbroken. Cole slowed down a little bit. He did break up his chest bar. I think that was very smart. He needs to break everything right now. He needs everything. All the sets should be single, which I don't expect there not to be that. But even be smart on his pull-ups. He could do sets of two and three, and that's not going to slow him down. And plus, it will save him for the later, the later reps. Scott Panchik, left side of the screen. Five-second edge on Matt Fraser as they move into their third and final round of this third set in 17.3. The magic number is 12 for them to get to that tie break time. They had eight minutes to get through the first two sets. They did that in four. We're seeing them take a little bit more time on this one as the reps are, again, the reps stay the same in total number each round, but the chest of bars increase as the snatches decrease. So there we are jumping up to that second set. The prior to 12 minute work that you have to do here, three rounds, eight chest bars, like you were saying, chasing the fourth squat snatch at the 185. Four minutes to do this. These guys have already banked time uh, to get ahead, so they're already ahead of the game, which we knew they would be. Well, Matt, Matt Fraser, Scott Pancheck, we're talking about tenths of seconds difference. Done with the third set as we move towards the fourth set of three rounds. Nine chest of our pull ups, three squat snatches at 225. And Matt just will not, he refuses to break those up. Whoop. Okay, that was a little, I thought he was going to go for that. In fact, I think he would have kept going if he would have known what the number was. But you can see Scott is actually relaxing there in the black tank, uh, the black shirt, top of the screen. He hits his four, totally comes off and rests. Gives himself that time. I mean, they got time. Take a, take a break. And this event really is about the snap, so save your, save your, uh, your work for when you hit the snap. Fraser on to his first rep at 225, and he ain't going to miss that one. Scott Pancheck just to his left gets his first rep as Cole Sager is working through his final set at 185. Three total squat snatches. You know, I saw that lockout on Scott on that last one. That left arm's getting a little, a little loose. A little shaky. I think with Matt Frazier, it's like the heavier the weight gets, the more in sync he gets. That was a clean one by Scott. I feel like it happens a lot with athletes. You know, you get to a certain light weight, especially for snatch or overhead squat. Oh, yeah. Where that 60 to 70% just feels like complete dog. It, it's way harder than it needs to be. And I don't know if it's because you just don't get it, give it enough respect. Um, but yeah, we all had that speed bump in the road that you got to deal with. Cole Sager taking a break before he starts his fourth set as Fraser and Pancheck are working into the second round 
of their four set, but that is what Cole Sager needs to do. He can't play the game no. that Scott and Matt are currently playing. And it's just totally because that's not the athlete he is. When you put those heavy barbells, he can move them well. In fact, he can move them better than 99.9% .9 of us, especially us talking behind the booth here. But when you're talking about two of the best in the world when it comes to this on the CrossFit level, it's hard to keep up. Well, and one of the things that, that Cole is very good at and has used the last year of training with Ben Bergeron is really focusing and putting those blinders on to where he does his own event. Doesn't worry where anybody else is. He just goes to perform his performance. And I, I mean, I think that that's what's been his hallmark for all those comebacks, being able to keep to that, keep to that focus. Wow, so here we are with the, the, the prior to 16 minute work. Nine chest bar pull ups in those three squat that is at uh, 225. And these guys are making short work of this, they really are. And we, we're talking about the single reps per round. Okay, nine, no, no, no problem, three snatches, I could do that, you know? Well, maybe not me, but, <laughs> but let's talk about the total volume up until this point. They're 10 minutes into a workout that has not been a slow start, right? The volume of chest of our pulls they've done up until this point is really going to start to catch up to people, and they may not really understand how much they're, they're doing to this point. I mean, look at look at Max Fraser's score, 141 reps. By the time they get done with this set, they would have already done 90 chest bar pull-ups and 53 squat snatches. That is a lot. And you don't really think of the compounding effect of that until you're sitting in the event. When you're sitting on the front side of it, oh, 95 pounds, 135 pounds, not a big deal. But that's why that early pacing is important. Being able to set yourself up for success in these later rounds when you really need the gas. Praise to the right side of your screen, still holding on to that lead over Scott Panchek, and he will be done with his fourth set at the 11 minute mark. Though Scott Panchek is still maintaining a, you know, within about 10 to 15 seconds of Matt, he looks comfortable in the snatch. They have a heavy weight coming up. It's getting real for the fifth <laughs> set. The one thing that Scott has in his favor is Matt's very aware of where everyone is. So you can see Matt does that. He kind of hunches down onto his haunches there, his ankles, and watches. That's where if Scott wants to make a move, he has to do it when Matt sits down. He's got to push Matt. Uh, not that Matt can't go hard. We already know what he, his, his, his abilities and capacities are. It's insane. But every time Matt goes down, Scott has to push and make him stand back up. That's just another squat that he's forcing uh, Matt to do. Fraser taking a break in the center of the competition floor as he moves to his first attempt at 245 pounds. And it looks like the anomaly was that one miss at 185. And Bill, I don't usually say this, but maybe 185 was just too darn light for him. I, I, you know what? For him, it was too darn light. He, he, he did that no, without any issue at the regionals uh, with an unbelievable time starting at 185. And again, I think that was just a little bit of, uh, I don't say jitters, because, I mean, he's a very experienced CrossFit athlete. He's been in this situation before. But look how relaxed. He looks better now than he did earlier. So I'm just going to say that that was part of his warm-up. Scott Panchik done with his second rep at 245, looking very strong. Cole Sager finishes his round at 225, still on the outside looking in. Now Sager does have to look out because now we're looking at his 16-minute cap when it comes to that 225, where Matt and Scott have 20 minutes to get through their fifth set. Yeah, again, Cole needs to play his game. He needs to really understand his body and know just how long he can sit. Can't wait too long even on those pull-ups. But again, it's that balance. It's that balance between that rest and that work ratio. Fraser seems to be resting a little bit less now from the pull-up bar to the snatch. I guess he finally found his comfortable weight, Bill, at well, 245. You know, the other thing is this. The way Matt works, the way we've seen him work, especially last year in the game, is when he sees blood, the guy goes on attack. Almost kind of in your, like, now I'm going to smash you. I saw you break. I saw you rest. I'm going to smash you now. Well, when you look at this event, 245, 265, jump right off the page. The, there's little advantage for Matt to blow it out too soon on the 185 and 225 when he knows that 245, the time you actually increase on someone that has trouble with that will be much more greater than those lighter lifts. Yeah, you know, but Scott is a very uh, worthy opponent. 
I mean, he just jumped his one right max up to 310 this last year at the Pan Am, at the Pan Am Olympic lifting last year. So, I mean, he is just as good as Matt with that, but I think Matt just has the confidence. This is where Matt, this is Matt, you know, we always talk about his background as an Olympic lifter. He's a crossfitter, obviously, now. But when you have that old school body mechanics, that's what your body does, guess what? You're gonna, you're gonna kick right into your mode of what you always do. Fraser Dunn with one rep. One more to go before he will go into his final set. As Matt Fraser making quick work at 245 and he'll be done. And all that is left is three rounds, 11 chest of our pull-ups and one squat snatch at 265. Scott Pancheck just two reps behind. Wow. You know, again, we're looking at that chest bar pull-up like it's a big number. That, that's not even what I'm looking at. But Scott Panjic saw that, a miss. So watch the clock tick right here. Watch the clock tick. Not only does he have to go back and recover, he's going to chalk. Mentally now, we talked about that mental fortitude. What is that going to do to you? Now he's thinking, man, there's no way I'm going to be able to catch Matt. i got to be able to regroup. That right there was 20 seconds. He just needed to take a little bit more time before he hit that rep. Looked very comfortable. And Cole Sager got under the 16 cap, and he is on to his first rep at 245 as Pancheck will lock out his last rep at 225, and he'll move into his fifth set as Matt Fraser, your 2016 Reebok CrossFit Games champion, slowly makes his way to 265. Look at that. He steps right up like it's 185. Just there, there isn't even a look of concern. Makes that look too easy. Matt Fraser, first rep, 265. Cole Sager will hit 245, and that is big for Cole Sager. Into our last set, 11 chest of our pull-ups, one squat snatch at 265. And Bill, they've already done 120 chest to bar pull-ups and throw another 60 squat snatches at him at the same time that that number is huge and nobody when they when they lit when they listed this workout they did not look at that they looked at oh 95 pounds 135 that's okay i can hang somewhere in the middle they didn't see that if you are actually and guess what we finally have a workout where these athletes the bigger stronger athletes get to come in here and, and go to work it's not all body weight like 50 pound stuff um man now we get to see that and their body weight ability. Fraser's second rep at 265 Fraser. is good as he can take his time walking back and forth, although we know all too well, especially for these open announcements, these are your guinea pigs going into the next four days of competition. How many people do you think are out of the gate thinking, oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in that, two, that 245. I'm gonna get in that 245. Look at the difficulty that Cole Sager is having in that 245, like he just made it in there, you know? And, and Cole, fifth at the games last year, seventh at the games the year before, has a 275 snatch, an amazing athlete. This is gonna change some people's uh, perceptions, definitely. Fraser is done with his final set of chest of our pull-ups as he re-chocks and re-grips on his wrist straps as he makes his way to his final rep here in San Antonio, Texas. 265, one squat snatch left to go. And Matt Fraser will take 17.3. Wow. wow. Unbelievable job. 18 minutes in, Scott Panchek gets his second rep. I tell you what, it's it's hard. It's hard going next to a guy like Matt Fraser who blew through this so well, let's say effortlessly. I mean, he worked his butt off, but the way he made it look. And Scott Panchek, one of the guys that is not afraid and has always done well against the best in the game. No, he does. Scott, Scott is great at chasing the best of the best of the best. Um, I, I mean, I guess part of me has to say that he's unlucky to have to be in that position. But it's always nice to have someone to push you and chase like that. Uh, but, man, you talk about an, a particular event that was designed for someone like Matt Fraser, that this is designed for Matt Fraser.
Scott Panchik on the left side of the rig. Two more chest bar pull-ups to go and one snap, squat snatch waiting in the wings as Cole Sager on the right side is trying to get underneath that 20-minute cap as he is at 245. And we can see just how, how much these guys have been breaking up all the pull-ups now. Scott was breaking up a lot. I really want Cole to be able to try to get through this. One of the things that I did see Cole do is he's really hanging on the bar longer than he needs to. When he wants to come off, he should just let go of the bar and drop. Good lift for Cole Sager. He does have to get one more rep in. As Scott Panchik, 265, might have been the easiest lift of the night. He'll be done with 17.3. Sager under 245. And at 1938, Cole Sager makes it to the final round. He has four minutes, the 24 minute mark. Three rounds, 11 chest of bar pull ups, and one squat snatch at 265. We know he can do it. He's done it at the reasonable level. Oh, yeah. But he didn't do it after 120 chest of bar pull ups. Those pull ups are, they're grinding on him, and he. He needs to know that he could cut. He doesn't have a lot of time. However, he cannot make this be where the pull-ups crush him for his one snatch that he needs to do. So he needs to be smart. He needs to make sure that he keeps that rep set down. Because look how long he's taking on these breaks. Two sets of two. One, two, drop. Give yourself a count. One, two, drop. Give yourself a count. That was a better let go of the bar right there. He released the second he touched his chest and dropped. Wasn't holding on. Again, we talked about that mental fortitude and being able to stick mentally into the game. I haven't seen Scott break. I haven't seen a change on his face where he got worried or concerned or like, ah, crap, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do that. This is getting hard. I'm showing frustration. He's just in his zone. And, and I mean, you know what? Hats off to his coach for being able to coach him to do that. He says that he has a difficult time, Cole says he has a difficult time of keeping those, those negative thoughts out of your head when things start getting tough. And the fact that he's had so many strong comebacks is a testament to the fact that he's able to really put those blinders on and just go to work irregardless of what's happening around him. Cole Sager setting up for 265, just 10 pounds underneath his one rep max. You can see a little bit where fatigue's coming into play, but he got it pretty good off the up. floor. He came up off the ground. Came up off the ground. Top left corner of your screen is the time currently in 17-3, 24 minutes is the cap as San Antonio rallying around Cole Sager. They gotta remember in the regional event where they did the snatch slider, they had to hit this weight two times. We're, we're up in that, they gotta hit it three. Uh, they had 11 minutes to get through that event with the 185, the 225, uh, the 245, and then the 265. Cole finished in about eight and a half minutes, 825 I think it was. Uh, he can do this. Yes, there's been a lot of pull-ups involved in this. There's been a lot of extra squat snatching too. But Cole has that pop. That last lift was really close. He's had to settle. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Just one minute remaining. And Bill, if you're the coach, kind of send back there, maybe one more opportunity. He have one, he have one more chance. He has 45 seconds. What he needs to do now is he needs to wait all the way until about the, to set himself up on the last 10 seconds give himself one more pull i will say this in the course of this event getting one of these is going to be gigantic for his score because this is going to be a big separator for a lot of guys he needs to get this lift cole sager 20 seconds remaining 
One lift, one final opportunity at 265. see the champ do what he does best but that is what it is all about Paul Sager the comeback wow. kid the comeback gets kid. that 265 that was amazing and look at how fired up is that man that was good the coach in me is all jittery coach in me is all jittery that was impressive oh look at that fired up and again, for him, it's not about where he finished. It's about how did he perform, and he did exactly. Look how fired up he is. He's happy that he hit that. That's what he wanted to get was that one lift. You're talking about a guy who went from ninth to fifth in one event to go to the CrossFit Games last year. Why did we ever doubt that guy? Cole Sager, 265 at the buzzer. So, man, out of the gate, these guys came out so way faster than I thought they were going to come out. I mean, touch and go on those snatches. Scott Hanchick was actually going singles. Matt didn't break it up until that last round of that. Matt went unbroken on so many of those pull-ups, really make up a lot of time. But he's very smart about taking his rest and knowing exactly where everyone else is. So he just kind of hangs out, knows where Scott's lifting, knowing what he's doing. Matt had that one had that one miss at 185, which was a myth more than anything else. Scott went a little, I think he was trying to push Matt, tried to catch him. Got a little bit out right there. And again, we talked about what that missing will do. Cost him about 15 to 20 seconds. And then Matt, he smelled the blood and he just went for it. And, and from that point on, he, he didn't look. I, the confidence that he exudes and it comes from his eyes, it's like, you're not gonna touch me, no one can touch me. I mean, look at that. Crazy. Matt Fraser takes 17.3. Scott Panchak, who almost looked the most comfortable in the entire event, finishing up at 265. But no better story to see there towards the end was Cole Sager. I mean, with look at five this. seconds left to go, and 400 people cheering for him, hits 265. And still have the mindset to go back and get some pull-ups. That right there, that's a competitor. I love that. Oh, man, that's that, nice. Closing out our 5'11 tactical replays, but your champ, once again, is down on the floor with Rory McKernan. So, Matt Fraser, you've got to tell the people at home what you just told me of how you evaluated this and what your strategy was coming out. Uh, you know, I knew it was going to be come down to the last lifts. Uh, 265 and that's a lot of weight to do when when your heart's racing so uh, just paced it from the beginning probably paced it a little bit too much uh, Doubting that time will hold up too well, but one and done you said go slow you said that's slow for Matt Fraser Yeah, uh, slow is smooth smooth is fast. So yeah, just try to keep my pace from the beginning All right, I heard that you recently reviewed game tape from the CrossFit games What, what were your big takeaways in looking back at this last year's games? Uh, that, that wasn't recently that was the day after the games <laughs> Um, you know, just looking at where my lowest placing finishes, you know, what, why was I finishing low? And then even my, my good finishes, you know, what could I have done better? Try, just trying to always improve. All right, you had a little shout out there as we were watching the replays to Cole. What impressed you about Cole's uh, finish there? Oh, you know, the, I mean, the 265, I think that's getting up there. Um, but I mean, the fact that he kept trying, stuck with it, but the most impressive part was that he kept his composure. Knew I, I was ready for a big bar slam and a celebration, but he, he wasn't ready to celebrate. He ran back, got three more chest bar. It's good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Matt Fraser and all these athletes. Hey, lots more to come, guys. 17.3 is not quite over yet. I got to thank our sponsor for tonight, Gators Eyewear. They've been fantastic and a great sponsor. You guys can get 20% off sunglasses at home. Go to their website, gators.com. 
use the promotional code in the open 17 that goes now through the end of the month so big shout out and thanks to gators coming up we've got the cool down show actually chase ingram this is a special treat is going to come down to the floor and take the reins of the cool down show brooke Entz has been watching your comments on social media all night so should be feeding those to the gentleman who just took the competition floor as well as dave castro it's not too late to get comments in go to the crossfit games facebook page i'm actually going to go warm up because it's the third installment of Roe vs. Boss, and this is the Alamo City, right? And I gotta make my last stand. So 17.3 Roe vs. Boss edition is coming up. Right now, I'm gonna leave you in the hands of CrossFit's Director of Certifications, Nicole Carroll. She has tips on how you should be approaching 17.3.